Okay, I think we're ready for another test here. Lots of time has gone by. I'm not sure how much. 20 minutes, half an hour. 18 degrees. That's pretty cool. I think we're ready. Um, there's one, one thing just before I turn it on. Um, I was a little surprised when I wiggled the component with the bad connection. I would have expected the radio to pop in and out of service more distinctly than it did. So that may not be the real problem. It may, may have been actually a latent problem or even though it was a bad solder joint, it may have been presenting no problem to the radio. So don't know. We just have to turn it on and see what happens. So I'm not 100% hopeful here. Okay, so I got the volume turned quite high if it were playing full. And uh, I'm going to turn it on full, full power. Here we go. Ten thirty-three. Will this be it? Answer is no. The radio continues to be a slow starter here. Okay, let's get poking in that area. short circuit in there. Huh. Wow. Let me separate those properly there. Yeah, pretty much a short circuit between these two pins. I don't know how close that really was, but pretty darn close. Okay, back on. working there full steam for a moment. to do the same thing turning it off. As, as things began to collapse, it would come to life briefly. This time on the way up, it's coming to life. Okay, let's put it on restricted here. Maybe it'll kind of stay in that state a little longer. something funny there but
going to anticipate the radio becoming very close to working and then maybe poking will identify the spot. again and I found this was really sensitive before too and it's wiggling that capacitor I resoldered Probably all it was. Okay, I gotta get a full voltage here. Keep poking. Warming up. 32 now. <coughs> Not receiving anything though this time. Oh, I hear a little bit of radio now. A little bit of ringing in one of the tubes there, or something. Never had much success with this, poking around like this. I turned it off again here. Wow, there was a wire there that I spotted much earlier that was just a mess. And I think even uh, uh, I think, uh, Bobby, uh, one, of the, one of my regular viewers, even commented about, I should really deal with that wire. That was the one that was wiggling there. 
let's take a close look at the situation with it. Okay, <laughs> just look at that for a while, see if you can sort out what's what. this red wire right here wraps around this terminal and makes a connection in here. Look at it. Look at the condition of it. This is the one I was just the last thing I was doing was this. Let's pull it right out of there. Ugh. I think that's carrying B plus. I, I, I can't really see how that, oops, could be a problem. Uh, because I've measured B plus okay in the radio. Could be sticking B plus onto this terminal where it shouldn't be. I just try to pull it clear. Get a good look at it. The workmanship on this is terrible. This is the only way to describe this. I can picture some 1960s Japanese sweatshop factory. You know, turn out five radios a day, you're fired. Extremely sensitive to movement. Uh, see how they're kind of like yellow wires wrapped around it, which looks like a weird thing. Maybe that's on purpose. That can be some kind of gimmick in the radio to uh, stop an oscillation, or who knows. So I'm looking at all the adjacent solder joints now. Ugly is they, they might look ugly, but it doesn't mean they're bad. And I guess they might look good or look nice and well done. It doesn't mean they're good. I'm way off on the wrong tube, too. I'm pretty sure this is an AM tube, so I, I don't know. I got the thing partially warmed up, too. Let's fire it back up here. <coughs> it's restricted power this time. Okay, tubes are conducting. That was interesting. Pretty super critical right in this area. You know, the answer to this radio might be just let it warm up for five minutes. Okay, let me 
give it full power. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, it's just a tuning thing, like messing around with the oscillator or something like that. You can't see I'm tuning the radio. I suspect it's out of tune here. I can't have music like that. so sensitive now. They're shooting in 4K? Come on. just say to myself, this radio is essentially working. Uh, what am I doing here for crying out loud? So what if it takes uh, three, four minutes to warm up? It eventually gets there and it works well when it gets there. 
the thing that's driving me on this, aside from curiosity, is the, the idea that whatever is wrong is just going to get progressively worse until finally it won't start. But I think at this point, um, I can't nail what it is, and uh, I'm flogging a dead horse. And, you know, there's a big risk here. I keep poking around. Eventually, I will break the radio, and it will not work and at all. And I will go from really not a terrible problem to... Uh, a bad one. So I think I'm going to stop here. I think this is uh, as far as I can get. I did find that loose connection. I was able to solder it back. That's something. Anyway. And uh, I, th I think that's all I can do with this guy. So I, I hope you don't find that too disappointing. Um, but I think the wise move on this is, is to quit while you're ahead. Uh, not push it, not push it any further. So one thing I do have to do is I have to, to finish off this capacitor arrangement back here. Right, replace the end capacitor. Maybe I'll leave the new one I put in, leave it in there, and uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay, so I soldered back the uh, capacitor on the detector. And uh, what I want to do is uh, fasten the pointer a little, a little firmer onto the string, uh, which is actually a touch trickier than you might imagine. I've marked the string with some pen marks. Thank you to whoever suggested the obvious to me, which is I should mark the string before this thing falls off. I did mark it. And now I'm just going to try to pinch the uh, clamp closed here on the string. It's never done. Another, another thing overlooked in this radio. Oh, that wasn't hard at all. There, that's on there very firmly now. Should make it a little easier to put the radio back together because this is a challenging radio to get back into the cabinet. Yeah, just remembering the uh, challenge with this radio, one of them is that slider bar getting that back together. Another challenge I have is finding the screw for it, for crying out loud. It's probably just sitting right here somewhere. Okay, so it's been quite a challenge putting this radio back together. I did it off camera. Um, the, the main challenge being getting the pointer to get on the, uh, the sliding bar that had to be put in, in there. Really tricky stuff. Um, amazing how much foul language can, comes out of my mouth when I don't have the uh, camera on. <laughs> and, that, and I sure have worn myself out, but radio um, is much much nicer looking than uh, when it first came to me and just just from being cleaned up because I had it apart and I was able to do it and, uh, let's see a couple of these have red dots on them Make sure the red dot on the knob lines up with something. A couple of these were loose, I think, too, and I've tightened those up. There we go. Still is a really nice looking radio. Got rid of all the paint speckles all over it and uh, cleaned it up pretty good. Hey, should we turn it on? Oh, we must. Switch to FM still. There we go, a little uh, indicator light came on. Yay. So that's quite a lesson on Japanese radios of this vintage. 
if uh, I think in the future if one of these comes my way um, I'm going to be really suspicious about bad connections even though the last uh, bad connection I re resoldered there doesn't seem to have been the cause of this slow startup problem hey, wouldn't this be something that just came to life normally now But just in terms of having that, that cool 60s look, it certainly got it. Oh, I should. It, it needs a pretty good antenna here. So, so you can see it's quiet to start again. Let's put it on AM. good on AM. It may not sound like it, but it is. I'll just leave this on for a while and uh, let it warm right up. Well, here it is all finished and it's warmed up. I'll just turn it up a bit. On December 5th, 2014, NASA launched Orion, the deep space program that will lead a wagon train to Mars. It could cost taxpayers as much as $500 million. Dollars. But with persuasive marketing, that amount may not seem so out of this world when you're under the influence. I'm Terry O'Reilly. Yeah, maybe my problem with this radio is I'm trying to fix one that's essentially working. <laughs> yeah. Been there before, tried that. So, thanks a lot for watching. Ooh, just realized I have my cell phone in here. Shame on me. And uh, hey, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get back onto a uh, turntable and uh, do the finishing work on that uh, a little later. So, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.